Hello, math humans. We're going to do 2.1b today. We're going to be doing more limit definitions of a derivative. Our objectives are that we're going to continue working with derivatives and tangent lines. So for our first example, we want to find f prime of x, which remember is the derivative for f of x is equal to the square root of x, and we want to do it using the formal definition of a derivative, and then we want to find the slope at the points 1, 1, and 4, 2, and then the last topic, or the last task, is we want to discuss the behavior of the function at the point 0, 0. So the first thing that we're going to do, I always write that my derivative f prime of x is going to equal the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And it's a good idea to write that down before you start working just so potentially you make less mistakes. Remember that you have to carry the notation throughout the problem until you do your direct substitution. So this is going to equal the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the square root of x plus delta x minus the square root of x over delta x. And this is the indeterminate form because notice if I did my direct substitution, the world would explode. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by x plus delta x plus the square root of x over the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Remember that this is 1. It doesn't change the value of my equation, but it does help me to manipulate my math. The numerator is a difference of two squares, so I'm not going to show all that work because it takes too long. So this is the limit as delta x goes to 0, and I'm going to get x plus delta x, that's the two radicals, and then minus, I'm going to get x, and then over delta x times, and then x plus delta x plus the square root of x. I do not distribute on the bottom because that just complicates things. Notice that the x's cancel, the delta x's cancel, and so now I can do my direct substitution. As delta x goes to 0, this guy's going to be 0. You can do all of this eliminating and showing that something goes to zero, but it has to be legible because whoever the reader of your math is has to be able to follow your work. So this is going to be 1 over 2 square root of x, and then we're done. I would write my conclusion statement, f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x, and then I'm done for the first part. The next one says find the slope, forgot the e, at points 1, 1, and 4, 2, so f prime of 1, and that is the x value of the first point, is going to equal 1 over 2. The square root of 1 is 1, so it's just going to be a half. And then if I evaluate the derivative at the other point, so here's the x value, because there's no y's in my derivative function, then this is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, which is 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. And then I would write my conclusion statements, and I'm going to get a half, and f prime of 4 is equal to a fourth. So notice that that would be a change in the slope. This point would show that the slope is decreasing, or it's becoming more shallow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the graph to answer the last question. So the function right here, so if this is the point 0, 0, notice that I would have a vertical tangent at that point. And if I tried to evaluate f prime of 0, I would get 1 over 2 times the square root of 0, which is undefined which verifies that I would have a vertical line at the point zero, zero. And since it said discuss, 
then my solution would be F has a vertical tangent at the point 0, 0. And if my work is right with the discussion, these two things both would comprise the discussion. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is a place where a derivative can't be done. And so I want to talk about f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. Can you guys see that? Maybe. I'll switch to a different pen. Maybe it'll be a little bit darker. Maybe. Uh, let's just switch to a whole other color. If I look at the graph of this, this is the, the absolute value that's been shifted two units to the right. And so it looks like this. An absolute value function has a sharp point at the vertex, which means that you can't take, I need to write the can't, you can't take the derivative at x is equal to 2. So I can manage, I can take the derivative and split this up into piecewises and manage it that way. So if I am trying to calculate the slope, I could do that if I just considered the left-hand side, and then I could take and talk about the slope on the right-hand side, but I can't take the derivative at a sharp point. So you have to split the function up into a piecewise. When we get to chapter 4 and we start talking about the area under the curve, then I would have a similar situation. Another interesting case would be y is equal to x to the third. The derivative f prime of x is going to equal 1 over x to the two-thirds. But let's look at the graph. y is equal to x to the one-third is going to look kind of like this. And so even though this graph is continuous, there is a vertical. This is not a crappy or this is a crappy graph, there's a vertical tangent at x is equal to 0. So there's a vertical tangent at x is equal to 0. And you can verify that by if I evaluated the derivative at 0, I would get 1 over 0 raised to the 2 thirds, which is 1 over 0. And then that would cause the world to explode, which means that it has a vertical tangent at x is equal to 0. So the conclusion that we would draw from this information, so I'm going to write our conclusion out, would be that a function is not, keyword, differentiable at a sharp point. And then the other thing that we would draw from this would be kind of the converse of that statement. If a function is differentiable, which means that you can take the derivative of the function, then that's also going to imply continuity. I guess I should write good grammar. That implies continuity. So we, we need to be able to talk about what's happening for a function in a variety of different ways. And so those are going to be one of the ways that we talk about it, is when we talk about I can't take a derivative at a sharp point. I can still find the slope of this piece and the slope of this piece. I can still evaluate the derivative here. But if a function is differentiable, then that means it does have continuity. All right, let's do example number two. And it says, describe the x values at which f is differentiable. And then the function is going to be f of x is equal to the absolute value of x squared minus 9. So remember when I have an absolute value, that means that the function is going to have some sharp points. And so this is a graph that's kind of helpful to understand what it looks like. This would be a negative 3. This is a positive 3. I could set the inside equal to 0 to find this out. 
I could also use my handy dandy grapher, but sometimes it's kind of nice to know what a graph looks like without that. So the function is differentiable everywhere except where the function has a sharp point. So to answer the question, I would say f is differentiable everywhere except when x is equal to plus or minus 3. And I could state this using the domain. I could state it a variety of different ways, but this is also a nice and concise statement. f is differentiable everywhere except where x is equal to 3. The other thing that I want to remind you about is always making sure that you answer the specific question that's asked. All right. For example number 3, we're going to be given that f of x is equal to x squared, cute little parabola, and I want to find the equation, uh-oh, pins dying, boy, I'm not batting a thousand with pins this morning, of the tangent line to the curve, you know my computer's trying to go to sleep, to the curve that goes through the point one negative three. All right, and we're going to do this with the limit definition of a derivative just to get some extra practice with that. So here's what we're looking for. I think it's always a good idea to look at the graph. Here's my cute little parabola. And then at the point 1, negative 3, okay, that's down here. And I want the tangent line, ugh, almost made it, to the curve so you get the general idea. So I'm going to do my derivative with the limit definition of a derivative. So this is the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x goes to zero. So if I start that process, the derivative is going to equal the limit as delta x goes to zero of f, sorry, x plus delta x quantity squared minus x squared over delta x. I'm going to expand the numerator, but remember I have to carry my notation until I do my direct substitution. This is x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus x squared over delta x. Now I can start eliminating things. The x squareds go away. Now I'm going to factor a delta x out of that statement. So this is the limit as delta x goes to 0, delta x times 2x plus delta x over delta x. This is what's going to eliminate that indeterminate form. Now I can do my direct substitution. That little guy goes to 0, and the limit is 2x. And so then I would say f prime of x is equal to 2x. And remember that the derivative gives you a generic equation that will calculate the slope along the curve at any given point. So now I'm going to evaluate my derivative at 1 because the point, you can't see it, the point was 1, negative 3. And again, my derivative only has x values, so I only have to evaluate it at the 1. So the derivative is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. So this is the slope of the tangent line, okay? If I write the equation of the line, I'm going to do the point-slope formula. So it's m times x minus x1, and I'm going to use that point, 1, negative 3. So this is y plus 3 is equal to the slope of the tangent that we found with the derivative times x minus 1. And I'm going to rewrite it just a wee bit and I'm going to write it as the tangent line is equal to 2x minus 1 and then minus 3. And remember, you can stop here. You could also simplify this to get the tangent line is equal to 2x minus 5. Either is okay. When we work with a reader from um, the AP College Board, he will tell you to stop here. He would actually probably tell you to stop here because typically what happens is as I try to simplify this equation, I might make a stupid mistake, and then if I make a stupid mistake, I lose points on my AP exam. 
Alrighty, that is it for today. I will see you soon.